much. Um, so it is absolutely my pleasure um, to introduce our first speaker tonight, uh, and that is Rebecca, um, and she is from, she created Plastic Free July, which is so exciting that there's been someone who's been out there doing all this work, and uh, it's been going for years. So I'll just give you a quick rundown on Rebecca. Um, so in 2011, Rebecca and a small team in local government uh, in Western Australia created Plastic Free July, the challenge, which has since grown to a global movement, inspiring over two and a half million participants in 177 countries to reduce single-use plastic. Gives me the shivers. Um, it's fantastic. Rebecca has participated in plastic pollution research expeditions in Queensland, the Cocoa Islands and North Atlantic Ocean. She's explored innovative solutions to plastic waste worldwide during a Churchill Fellowship. She is now the Executive Director of the Plastic Free Foundation, a not-for-profit with the vision of a world without plastic waste. Wow, like that's a huge little lead in to you, Rebecca. Um, and I'd like to welcome to you to New Zealand, even though you're in Perth. And um, and uh, we're really looking forward to, to having a few questions with you and find out a bit more about it. Welcome. Okay, so oh, can you just uh, make sure, oh, you're unmuted, that's cool, because I saw you're muted before. Um, okay, so it's the 10th anniversary of the, the Plastic Free July Challenge, um, and we'd love to know um, how and where it all began, Rebecca. Thanks very much, Kate, and thanks for having me, and um, hello, everyone. So where it all started, I, look, I didn't set out to start a challenge, Kate. I really just set out to change myself and my own behaviour and what went into my bin and my family's bin after visiting a recycling facility and just being really overwhelmed by the amount of waste that we produce. And I was working in local government at the time and just seeing that waste all together, my waste and my neighbour's waste and my street and my community's waste, I just suddenly realised that filling my recycling bin each week, of course it's important to recycle, but I wasn't saving the planet by doing it. And the less that I put in there, the more that I could reduce, the more of an impact that I was going to have. So that um, night when I was putting out my recycling, I thought, I've got to do something about this. And knowing the particular challenges around plastic, um, chose chose single-use plastic as a thing I was just going to avoid and uttered the the words I'm going plastic free next month who wants to join me to my colleagues and it's really really grown from there and it's grown I think because um you know no one's okay with this problem everyone's concerned about this plastic waste ending up in our environment and our landfills and our and our oceans and it, it it gave people something to do about it take action and do something positive yeah, that's, and I, I think we're noticing it's got, I mean, that, that whole movement from 10 years ago is accelerating hugely now. Um, but, it, but back then, um, how, was it, how was it different? Um, how easy was it to go plastic free like 10 years ago? Funnily enough, it was a lot harder than I thought. It was, um, I thought, ah, you know, it's not going to be too hard. I always take my own shopping bag. I was way too stingy to buy bottled water when you could fill up your, your reusable bottle from the tap. But it was just such an eye opener. You just realise it is everywhere. And I mean, it was certainly a lot more difficult then. I remember the first time I did a radio interview and I couldn't even get across, across the concept of single use. You know, and I was talking to the presenter, it's like, but the phone's plastic and your car's plastic and computer's plastic. It's like, great, that's plastic we use and we reuse and we value. It's this single use stuff that we throw away uh, after a few a few seconds or minutes. That's mm -hmm. the stuff for, that, that we need to tackle. Um, and yeah, there certainly wasn't as much options. It wasn't the topic of conversation that it is now. It was it was much more of a challenge. And that's why I think that was the power of doing it together, doing it as a community. Um, you know, I certainly didn't know how to do it. Um, but together, we had lots of ideas and doing it in a supportive way was um, was was really helpful. Like back then, you know, if you took your own container to uh, a deli section or something to get filled, like you were looked at like you were speaking in a foreign language. <laughs> you were crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Some may <laughs> still say that. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool to see that it's becoming more of the norm these days. People are just actually doing it and then expecting it, which is, which is fantastic. So how, how easy was it to get other people on board? Did you have a struggle or did you have a whole bunch of people who were like, yeah, let's do it together? Yeah, we did. But that was never, ever the intention. The intention wasn't to change other people. The intention was just to change myself. And I think that, you know, the one of the great, that's something that, that's great. I mean, Plastic Free Delight, you know, I don't even know where the name came from. It just kind of it emerged. It really did grow organically. And, um, and I think because we weren't trying to educate other people, you know, it was never an education campaign. It was never about blaming or criticizing. It's like, we're doing this. Who wants to join us? And it was like, we weren't even, even really talking about it. You know, we were just, I'm going to do this. Oh, this is hard. What are you doing about this? Oh, someone else is doing this. And we were just doing, and it really grew through actions, people taking these steps. And when you start to, you know, take your own reusable cup or, bag or whatever it is or container or say oh you know no no packaging on that um trying to go plastic free it's a very visual and visible thing so mm -hmm. it really grew through those observations of you know other people seeing you do the right thing and then you know a number of people would have those conversations with the same retailer and they're like oh well you know a lot of our customers are saying this what can we change here we need to respond that's fantastic. And that, that's where it does, it, the organic movement is so, so powerful, isn't it? Um, and so why, why do you think the movement has grown so much? Like, what, what's your, been your experience um, as far as like, you know, how, how like, why did it get so big? And because it's happened quite quickly too. Yeah, yeah. Look, I kind of wish I knew. I wish I had a bird's eye view of how this campaign <laughs> grew from, you know, it was 40 people in Perth back to our estimates last year. We're actually 250 million. And I think it's because people are concerned about this issue and they've made changes in their own lives, you know, which hasn't always been easy, but they felt good about it. They felt good about not having so much plastic in their bin, about purchasing more fresh local produce about buying things from scratch about connecting with their community and they've wanted to share that with others they notice the plastic unnecessary plastic and the things that they've learned so then they've taken it you know parents have taken it into their kids schools people have set up different groups within their communities boomerang bags and different different initiatives they've taken stuff into their workplace There's, we've never been hard and fast about any of the rules about this it's just about do what you can where you are with your circumstances and then the sharing and the storytelling has been a really important part of it you know I've learned lots from talking to people in Raglan talking to people from Wanaka um, sharing what they've done and then another community group in and Vancouver Island would go that's a fantastic idea yeah we're going to do that too and I really think that that's there's that grassroots action that comes from this um this moment in time where all of these communities and people that are concerned about this issue have come together and it's 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 i always say it's kind of got a life force of its own and it's you know i'm in the very privileged position of getting to lead this organization and tell my story but if if no one else had, had taken this on it would just be me and my sometimes mostly willing family and, our, and what we made in our, the changes we made in our own bin, but instead it's this fantastic community. Yeah. And it is a lot of knowledge sharing, isn't it? Like that's where, where one person knows something. We don't all need to know or do exactly the same thing, but if we're all knowing and doing things differently and sharing knowledge, we make a big difference together. Um, so what do you find personally um, the most challenging thing for yourself in, in order to go plastic free? Uh, apart from teenagers? <laughs> Um, actually, my kids are pretty good. My kids are pretty good. Um, I think it's, for me, I think it's that line with some things, like if it was just me, I could, I'd choose to go without. Um, uh, my family is really on board with lots of stuff, but I've also got to be careful, you know, to draw a bit of a line. And it's not, I always say it's not about doing everything. It's about doing something. Um, so we're certainly not, not perfect. So 
you know, for example, my kids um, love um, Mexican for dinner, like burritos and stuff. And, and I've made the tortillas myself. I can't buy them unpackaged anywhere where I live, um, but they don't like my tortillas. But when they eat them, we eat lots of beans and lots of fresh veggies. So you know what? That's just something that we buy in plastic yeah. packaging. And I'd rather have an alternative. If it was just me and my husband, you know, he, he, he wouldn't get a choice. He likes the ones I make anyway. So <laughs> that's just a comp that's a compromise. And that's, you know, I think if, you know, it's great that we have people that can fit their year's worth of landfill waste in a jar, but that's, that's just not achievable for everybody. And I think we learn a lot from those people. Whereas I think the plastic fridge, like it's an entry point into this journey. You know, we really encourage everyone to do just one or two things. And I think if everyone does that and we start to say reduce our waste by 5%, which is the average of our participants, that is where you start to make a massive, so if you get 100,000, a million, 100 million people to do that, that's when it starts to create an impact on the system. And, you know, segueing into your next speaker, that's what impacts and is heard by government and by business, and that's where that's where the real change ultimately has to happen. Yeah, and and that's I think that's um, that's so it's so on point as as far as joint jointly we make such a massive difference. But often I think people get really downhearted and thinking that they're not doing enough, but they don't realise that just doing that one thing is actually making a difference. If a million people do one thing, we make a million differences in a day. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I'd, I'd I'd just like to um, like thank thank you so much for coming along.